How you doing guys? Today we're going to work on reassembling the RJ transmission. Now if you're looking for a play-by-play, -play, uh, in-depth, in-the-weeds kind of reassembly video, um, I have linked that in the description below. About a year, year and a half ago I did a full-blown reassembly video. Uh, everything that's in that video I will do on this transmission. I'm just not going to bore you with a whole nother uh, video. Just quite you know so close together on the reassembly so if you're if you're looking for that level of detail uh go ahead click the link below and that'll take you to my video that i just did putting one of these transmissions back together one of the things i didn't necessarily show that is like the side plate gaskets you know what do i use for that how do i put it kind of together things of that nature i'm going to show you uh that in this video so hopefully you'll find that interesting This gasket here on the workbench is actually a is the one of the gaskets that came out of the transmission. Now you can buy these. I think somebody on Facebook sells them. Every once in a while they'll pop up on eBay, but you know they they want some money for them, and I don't know. I, it's just it's a very easy thing to make. Um, I years ago, years and years ago, I did make a template. And it's a later style one, which is really kind of thick at the back. But in general, I made a template. I go out and buy some gasket material, which is cheap. And then just go ahead and make a gasket. So I made this one. This is uh, one of the gaskets that's going to go on the transmission. Let's go ahead and make the next one. So first off, I'm just going to lay out the material on the workbench. I'm just going to take my basically Sharpie marker. And I'm just going to carefully just kind of run it around the, the gasket material. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. If it's a little bit big, it um, doesn't matter because once everything kind of cures, uh, once we get everything all put together, it, you know, we can always go back and trim it, trim it down. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, the biggest thing is just to kind of be, you know, get it as close as possible. So that's all. So we're just going to kind of go around you know, as fast as we can because we want to save some time here. There we go. Up, around. See? Just kind of going around, just get, getting the basic shape. Um, then we'll, once I get the basic shape in place, then just kind of go around and mark where I want the holes to be, you know, roughly. Because really, at the end of the day, we can always make adjustments. It's not a big deal. Um, nine times out of ten, the holes don't line up anyway, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. As long as we can keep it fairly close. So just do that. There we go. Uh, probably could have been a little better, but it's close enough. So we'll go ahead and drop that over there, and let's start taking it out. One thing I do is the inside, I use a utility knife. On the outside, I'll use a pair of scissors. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my utility knife. I usually cut the inside first. That way we have the most stability when we do the outside, or most, most stability when I cut the inside out. Because if you cut the outside out, it gets to be too thin and real wobbly. So let me go ahead and cut this out and cut the outside out, and then I'll show you how I do the holes. Now you might have said, why did you do the inside with the knife, with the, with the utility knife? And the reason for that is it's easier to go to do all of these inside curves with the knife compared to the scissors. The scissors like the, likes to bind up um, in there. The outside, just do it with the scissors. It doesn't have to be perfect um, in the sense that once we get it all together and everything cures, when we use a little bit of sealer, we'll go ahead and take, a, take the utility knife and cut the excess gasket off. The best way that I have found to start the holes is to just use a good old fashioned uh, paper punch. Just go ahead and click each one of the holes 
right where they're marked, they'll be close enough. The bolts are 5 16 so they're going to be a little bit bigger than this anyways. So we'll have some room to play with. So I'm going to go ahead, punch all these out, and then we'll see, uh, we'll do a general layout on the side cover and see how everything looks. So for starters, we went ahead and we put the, the brake shaft uh, in place. We put the differential. The differential I had taken all apart, cleaned everything, put it all back together. I just very gently put some engine oil. I know it's supposed to have gear lube, but I put a little engine oil in the bearings, uh, even in the uh, brake shaft bearing, which is underneath. I lubed all of the bushings, uh, the bottom bushing, the inside bushing here. So all of that is lubricated and ready to go. I make sure everything spins super nice. So that way we don't have any binding or anything to that effect. The other thing I did too is I, I went around and I got my cookie, excuse me, my cookie wheel on my die grinder, went all the way around the gasket area to make sure it's good and clean. I'll wipe that down with some brake cleaner before I go ahead and put the gaskets in place. So. Uh, next up is, I don't know, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so I got the bulk of the gears in. Uh, the side cover is loosely bolted in place. Some of the bolts aren't there yet because of my vice is in the way of getting the bolt in. But you can see I just put a little bit of sealer on one side. I put the sealer on the plate side because there was a little bit of like rust pitting on the plate. So I just wanted to fill it in. But basically... Everything is pretty much just snugged. I'm not, I'm not gonna tighten that down yet, but everything is solid. The, obviously, the differential, the axles, the brake shaft, the cluster gear and shaft, and then the input shaft and the um, shift gears. Or, you know, so the lower gear is third, uh, I think it's fir third and first third and reverse this is first and second i think that's how it is but in any event the back sides of the gears with the grooves go towards each other that's where the shift forks uh slide in so all of that's in everything seems to spin really good if i go like this you know everything spins real nice I, the differential still spins real nice so i'm going to go ahead and clean up this surface clean up the surface of the other plate a uh, side plate and drop that into place. Okay, so everything's put back together. I've torqued all the bolts to 120 inch pounds. I just used my little uh, bar torque wrench. Both sides, everything is all torqued in and done. Uh, I am gonna take my razor knife and cut the top of the gasket material that I have hanging off. One thing to keep in mind is your brake spring goes on the brake shaft side and it goes in the last or the most rear hole in the lower section of the transmission so that's the last hole there's three hole there's three bolts along the bottom it's the back one and this is the first one up the it's kind of going up the arc so let me go ahead and we're going to go ahead and clean and cut back all of the gasket because we don't need that hanging off top and bottom and then the next thing is to put the seals in but the seals are not going to be here until tomorrow so let me clean this all up and then we'll, once the seals are received we'll put those in and this transmission is pretty much a done deal I'm still waiting for the seals to show up so what i did was i went ahead and put the uh, clutch assembly uh, back on so that's all set to go i put the shifter in set the tension with the bolt this thing shifts real smooth um, I know that doesn't appear to shift real smooth but this thing shifts real smooth uh, even in gear let's see if we can get this thing there it goes see how nice that went everything spins so good I mean everything seems to move real nice you can see the brake shaft the axles everything so this thing is on a rebuild um, or a refurbish let's call it uh, you know level this thing's all set to go just gotta get the seals i'll show you put how i'll show you putting the seals back in and this transmission is ready to be put back in service the uh seals finally came in um 
the brake shaft and the input shaft both use the same seal. Um, specifically, a, I got a Timken seal, uh, part number 471643. It essentially looks like this. This is actually a national, um, a national seal you can see right there. And the part number, whoa, let's turn it over. And the part number is 471643. The big, and then this is a Toro um, axle seal. It's the, the later model one. It's kind of like an umbrella seal that goes over the axle shaft. Um, big thing about all of this, oh, and the part number for that is Toro 832840. The big thing about this is to go over all your shafts, make sure there's no sharp edges, okay? Make sure they're clean. Um, even, I'm even talking about the input shaft. Uh, you're gonna wanna put a lot of oil or a good coating of oil over the entire shaft, over the entire shaft. This particular one, you're gonna oil the top of this, of this and then slide it in. And then essentially, I'm just going to gently tap, tap, tap it all the way around. I don't believe this will work. Oh, yeah, see, it, my, this is the biggest socket I have, and it just won't work. Um, for this seal here, I'm going to neck, uh, you know, get it down, and then I'll use this just to kind of finish it off. I don't, I'm, I'm going to try to find a washer if I can, because you really don't want to deform this, because as soon as you deform it, that's it. It's done. But, again... Oil all of this, oil the rubber, and then oil. I even put a little oil on the outside of this, and that'll just help tap it in. This one is just going to go flush, so basically just even with the outside of this. So let me go ahead and get these in place so you can take a look. Oops, you can take a look at what the final product is. And there it is, it's all set. Seals are in, seal is in. Just need to make sure you tap these in nice and straight. This one here, these umbrella seals, I call them. Um, you just don't wanna force them all the way in because what happens is they'll push the, uh, the rubber out. So as soon as you start to, you know that it's nice and you know it's, it's on, you don't see any real protrusion of the rubber, you're fine. If you take a look at it from this position, it looks fairly straight. Uh, all the way across, you're good, you're good to go. This spins real nice. The differential is obviously not bound up because the uh, axles turn at, as an opener end. This is good. Let's see if we can turn this without this thing falling. Yep. And this is usually a little bit more difficult to spin, but yep, perfect. All right. Well, there it is, guys. Another RJ transmission ready to be put back in service. I just got to clean the pulleys and get a couple Woodruff keys. But other than that, we're going to call this project done. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And until the next project, have a nice day.